listening to The Donor Doctor Show, where your host, James Newberry, will help you improve the health of your fundraising. Now over to Jane. Hello, this is The Donor Doctor, and I'm with uh, Ben Walters again, uh, top email guy. Last time we were talking about uh, the committee and Amish PAC and what you did to uh, help uh, Donald Trump win in Ohio and Pennsylvania. Uh, I understand you went to the inauguration on Thursday. Is that right? Yeah, it was a hell of an experience. It's Friday. It's Friday. I'm sorry. Uh, I've been to a few inaugurations. Uh, 2000, which was kind of similar to that because it was disputed. 2001 mm -hmm. uh, with uh, George W. Bush, and then right. I went to the uh, Obama one. I used to have good contacts. So <laughs> excuses, I was like, excuses. I had 20 or 30 yards from Obama, and that was historic. And uh, this one was interesting too. Um, but I was kind of struck. I don't know if you saw the Women's March the next day, any of the speeches there. Did you, did you take it? <laughs> yeah, that was ridiculous. I was really thinking, with all these celebrities, I thought they were going to leave the country. And I see Madonna's, like, <laughs> Linda Dunham, dropping remember F bombs her? and Linda Dunham said yeah. she was going to leave. You know, uh, Amy Schumer was there. All these celebrities that share... I'm sick of these people. When are they going to leave? Well, they said they were. Yeah, I'm did waiting. You, the, the, the show that was interesting, the speech was interesting with Ashley Judd. It was gross. Yeah, uh, yeah. But it was it was theatrical. It was entertaining. I watched it twice. Uh, but you mentioned Amy Schumer, and I think yeah. that's uh, that's interesting because she was wearing orange. And I don't know if you know why she's wearing orange. That's the no uh, color of... Uh, she, wor she She writes emails or signs uh, every town for gun safety. She's, she's big uh, because of the... There was a shooting at one of the movies that she was in, Trainwreck, I think it was called. Oh, okay. And that's why she does it. Oh, my god. And uh, uh, I want to talk about the six kind of emails, and that, that's one of them where she, they messed up. Uh, I guess the, the most popular type of email is an, is an offer, and we talked about that before. One, one of them we both got was George H.W. Bush offered a pair of socks. A pair remember? of socks, sure. And that was so popular, not only that you and I separately bought those socks mm -hmm. it made the news it made the local tv news. i've it talked made... to so many people that have also like bought the socks off of that offer that's a great part of it was the signer it's a unique guy he doesn't he doesn't sign a lot he, older guy you kind of feel i mean pretty good president good good man mm -hmm. too you know uh and the socks were kind of interesting just something to wear well different. and that's what he's known for yeah yeah, he's, he's known, for, known for the crazy funny socks. A great premium, something unique to them. So that, yeah. that's one kind of offer. I know that, that, that uh, Donald Trump had inaugural tickets were, you know, that's, we were talking about lunches great and offer. stuff like that, yeah. Uh, interestingly enough, Amy Schumer, I got an email from her recently, she had a great offer, but the mistake was she didn't put it in the subject line. And the subject line, along with the who's signed it, sending it, is, is most of it. You know, some say 80%, you know, I don't know, but 70%, 60%. But the majority of it, you'd agree, is the subject one. That's mm -hmm. by far the most important thing. Mm -hmm. She said, let's get loud together. All right, let's get stupid. loud. Yeah. I mean, who, who, who knows? I mean, who, I don't know what that is. Now, some people say that appeals to curiosity. No, curiosity is a high threshold. Yeah. They had an offer that you could meet her backstage. Amy Schumer? Yeah. They'd fly you to New York, uh, Madison Square Garden, you'd see her, uh, and you got to think, if you're a woman, oh, we can go shoe shopping the next day. If you're a guy, maybe you think we make out, you know, she's, <laughs> she's you never know. You never know. I mean, you're, this is a great offer, but they buried it. They buried it, like, in the third or fourth paragraph. So, let's get loud. They're trying to be too clever. They're thinking of it, they're thinking of it from their perspective rather than what the recipient, what the donor wants, mm -hmm. what people want. Sure. In one of the previous emails, uh, we were talking about empathy. And that's about, you gotta think about what, what do they want? And, and, and you know, that, that was a mistake there. It had potential, had the elements of a real successful appeal, but they made a mistake. After talking about uh, an offer, uh, emergencies are great. I saw one recently that was really strong. Uh, 26 donkeys will starve to death unless you and I provide them a Christmas miracle. P pretty strong. So an emergency, notice the uh, specifics there. Mm -hmm. 26, you know exactly. Uh, pretty strong. Recognition, boy, that's, 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 a, that's a strong one. You know, sure. in the museum market, how difficult that is. But, but you remember there were air shows where you could get your name there. As a, yeah, remember that yeah. did work. So recognition oh, yeah. is something valuable. 
curiosity. Um, mm -hmm. This is probably the one most abused. Is it, when I say curiosity, it means be really intriguing. Uh, one of the direct mail uh, okay. uh, teasers that I think would have worked as an email is one woman struggled against Bill Clinton. I got one from Drayton Burr. He's, a, he's an English uh, copywriter. He used to work for Ogilvy and Mather, and he says uh, why I went to uh, a brothel on Christmas. Mm -hmm. He actually didn't go to a brothel, but there was yeah. enough truth into it because then he talked about, I, I did it to get your attention, but there is a connection. He talked about how real estate, uh, this guy tried a totally different approach where he'd tell all the flaws of the building. He was selling a brothel. Uh, you know, so, Interesting. So, so, it yeah. was, so something, something. I'm not saying that everything has to be like that, but it's a high threshold for curiosity. I see that one. A lot of times people say, oh, people are curious. Nah, most, you have to be really strong on that one to, sure. to, be, to, 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 to meet uh, mustard. Uh, yeah. A good story is another one. I know you don't probably like him, Eric Erickson. He was part of the uh, Never Trumpers. You remember him? <laughs> he just became irrelevant like so many of the other ones. Well, he sent an email, and uh, he was talking about it kind of like, uh, honestly, about how difficult it's been for him, how his survival. Sure. And, and then he had a mask for money, and I thought it was effective. He didn't lead with it. He kind of made you... You know, his survival as a talk show host? Or? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's just been very talk. Uh, you know, the sponsors. Right, yeah, you know, I forgot all about Eric Erickson. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, just uh, it's a good story. Yeah. Um, involvement. Involvement a, is a very good one. Um, you know, the, you talk about the change.org and care to petitions, they do that. Uh, I saw one recently with moveon.org where they had a meetup and they you know, invited you to, you know, to protest Trump. And you know, it was all on you know getting people involved in the political process, and then at the end they have like an ask for money. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, uh, so this is this is kind of like your typical petition or survey in, in a direct mail package. Mm -hmm. So uh, these these are these are some of the things that uh, that I've found uh, to be uh, quite useful in emails. Right. You know, one of the reasons I'm doing this podcast is because. I need to get better at emails. Emails are growing uh, mm -hmm. by leaps and bounds. They're still dwarfed by direct mail in most sectors or many mm -hmm. sectors like museums. But the political, you know, it's on par now. Mm -hmm. um, and so you really need to know. Now, the, the thing I like about emails, it's kind of interesting as I've been reading like Claude Hopkins recently, mm -hmm. it's more like the, the roots of advertising where the headline dominates and imports. In, in direct mail, it might be the envelope, and then the first few lines. It's not as the subject line is so important. So I think that's where you need to do your testing. You, you would agree with that. You found that out in your own. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would completely agree. It's got to be. It's very important. Very important. The the majority you would say even. Yeah, for sure. For sure. For yeah. Sure. So it's 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 uh, it seems like the you know you think of it as a twenty first century technology emails. But it, but it really, the roots of it are based on um, psychology. Sure. You know, like take recognition, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, Claude Hopkins has a story how these books, you know, how people like the, I don't know, the hundred classic books of literature, mm -hmm. they weren't selling. But then he, as soon as he agreed to put your name in gold, you know, guilted mm -hmm. uh, like they did, people would, the, the sales just, you know, went through the roof. Oh, yeah, people wanted something. the name recognition, you know. That's so something. yeah, so so a lot of the things that have worked in general advertising worked in emails. It's the same psychology. So you know, I mean, there's it's it's that's what I'm learning as I'm studying what's working, what's not working, and doing my own emails. I have a lot of lot to learn, but I've you know I've learned from watching you. Sure. Uh, you know, it's a two way process. Some people mm -hmm. in the email and direct mail, like Christopher. Uh, well, anyway, uh, that's really interesting. It is. Uh, thank you. Uh, we did an interview a long time ago with you and Christopher, and I never got to producing it because I was procrastinating. Sure. But I think a lot of the things we said in there still still uh, are true. Oh, yeah. So just, just keep in mind, this is, uh, anyway, the, the Monday after uh, inauguration, and this probably air in a, a week or two. But anyway, I thank Sounds you for having a guest, and uh, wish yeah. you well. Sounds good. Thanks, thank Jim. You. Bye. Hey, this is James Newberry, the Donor Doctor, and welcome to the Donor Doctor Show. Uh, I want you to know if you uh, have any comments, disagree with me, uh, you can always email me at the donor doctor show at gmail.com. It's all lowercase. Anyway, we're going to talk about email fundraising today. Uh, we have two experts in the field. 
uh, Christopher Wogan and Ben Walters. Uh, they uh, raise uh, money uh, for a variety of groups, uh, animals, museums, uh, but probably raise the most for political candidates. And when we think of emails, of course, it works probably best for emergencies and political candidates. Uh, I know Bernie Sanders said he had over three and a half million uh, donors, so that's, that's quite a sum. He did, yeah. uh, so he's doing quite well. Uh, and. Uh, has a $27 average, so he can go back to them plenty of times, whereas uh, some other candidates might have a donation of, say, $2,700, or they're maxed out already. Anyway, um, I was at a conference not too long ago, and uh, email is still dwarfed by direct mail. It's around 8%, but in the political candidates, it's almost, uh, in many cases, bigger than direct mail. Am I correct about that? Um, yes. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Well, anyway, um, uh, Christopher... You did fundraising for Ron Paul uh, four years ago. It was very successful. What did you learn in that uh, process that might be helpful to other people? Um, well, I mean, they de they de developed a whole bunch of techniques. Um, I didn't actually work on the Paul campaign. Right. I understand I what you're familiar with. The, yeah, yeah. For, uh, his organization. Oh, I see. Okay. For Liberty. But uh, during that campaign, they they pioneered like uh, money bombs and stuff like that. What is a what is a money bomb? It's um, repeated asks over a short period of time, uh, with an urgent deadline. Oh, the deadline! Of course, the deadline it, it works in so many things, so that wouldn't surprise mm -hmm. me. Yep. Um, one of the things I was wondering about, I thought Rand Paul would be uh, as successful, or maybe even more than than his father. But it, it, well, now that he's withdrawn, it's clearly not the case. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that was? I mean, there are so many things that that you can talk about went wrong with the Rand Paul campaign right. and went within and, and, and out. But whenever you have, um, I think Ron Paul is more likable. Okay. And not only that, but when you have a purist, right, right, it's it's, it's an easier sell. When like a Bernie Sanders, who is yeah. I'm a socialist, people understand that it's it's. Very ideal, extremes. very idealistic. You know, Bernie Sanders is an honest man. No, he doesn't make concessions. He he is what he is, and, and I think Ron Paul had that same same reputation. Yeah, and, and Rand is willing to make deals. He knows how politics works. He gets down behind the scenes. In fact, a, a good example of this is the audit of the Fed bill. It never came up for a vote on the Senate, and never ever came up for a vote on the Senate. Right, because Ron Paul doesn't have the power to push that through. Doesn't make deals. Rand got it on the Senate floor. Because right. he's willing to make deals, he's willing to make concessions in order to, to promote his causes. Hmm. Well, it's interesting. I, I was wondering if it might be that the uh, he was a strong opponent of the Iraq War, and that was a bigger issue back then. But but, but maybe what you're saying yeah, is I mean, more, more true. That into it, of course, the foreign policy aspect of it, because people don't understand his foreign policy. Sure. He let other people label him whatever they wanted to label him on foreign policy. Sure. Well, uh, changing uh, subjects here, I, I, one of the things you said to me that you've tested is that women signers work better than male signers. Is that Absolutely. correct? Absolutely. Even to other women? Well, there is an exception. If you have a, uh, a well-known signer, the well-known signer will work better than a woman signer. But if oh, you sure. have an unknown male and an unknown female, right. almost every time across the board, the unknown female name would work. That's interesting, isn't it? And to males and females as well. Yeah, that is interesting. Now, um... A lot of people ask, you know, they always, if you go to these conferences, they say, is there, a, is there a good day to mail? Is there a good time? Is the morning better than the evening? Do you, do you think it matters or it's hard to say? It does, yeah. There, there, are, there are times when you don't want to be mailing. And, and this actually shifts because they'll have industry, they, what they call industry standards. And um, so they're like, don't mail on Saturday, don't mail on Sunday. But nobody's mailing on Sunday. So it might be better. Uh, it might supply be Supply and, and demand. And, and I'm sure it shifts over time, too, because if you ever notice your inbox on Monday, it's full of things. Now You're my, fighting for space. You're now, fighting for attention. Uh, one of my first times I was involved in email, I was actually doing direct mail for a candidate. And uh, the consultant, though, he was talking to me about the email program. And, and, and he, didn't, he wasn't grounded in direct mail, uh, so he was doing things somewhat uh, ad hoc. And he said that, you know, when you made it, he wouldn't ask for a specific amount in the email. He would just, you know, say contribute, and then you do the link. And then you would, he would have the choices. Mm -hmm. And he said one time they, they, the, uh, whoever was doing the email for him put 25 as the minimum ask instead of 35. And it dropped the average gift $10, he said. 
And I mean, have you seen things like that? I can I can actually see that to a degree. Uh, it depends on your client. It depends on what you're writing for. Right. It depends on the issue, the urgency, all that I've, stuff. I've found for like a lot of candidates, 35 is like a common. It seems in the 30s seems common. Yeah. Um, but what I would say about the uh, about email, um, mm-hmm. if you're not going to put an ask, if you don't have a strong reason to put an ask in, mm-hmm. then try foregoing the ask in the actual appeal and um, justify your ask on the donation page. So right, right. Make donation page stronger, just like you would in a reply device. Most correctly. direct mail yeah. people wouldn't do that because they always ask in the letter and then on the reply. So, That's so you would I make that, that you yeah, would make that mistake. Mm-hmm. Now, I gave uh, uh, money um, to one of the candidates, and I noticed that um, then um, I, I gave a little bit of money to Carly because I, I liked her. I just thought she was. Uh, Anyway, so she comes back to me and asks me for three dollars, and I said, "Well, I gave you thirty-five, just kind of as a as a teaser gift, so, so you know, to get get on her file." I, I get I get on a lot of files, I'm sure as you all do, in in, in trying to mm-hmm. get on direct mail and stuff like that. And uh, she asked me for three bucks, and I thought that was crazy until I told. Then you told me about the old Obama, which of course I was familiar with. They often ask for three dollars or even one dollar. Uh, although I know Bernie asked for three, but if you go on Bernie's site, he has a minimum ask of ten, and you could, you of course, could ask give three because he has an other thing. Now I noticed others. I've checked other uh, Republicans like uh, Kasich has a minimum of twenty five on there. Um, so I was wondering, what, what's your thought on that? Well, whenever, well, a couple of questions. Was it a, a recurring donor ask? Well, they had that too. You could give each month as well. Because there's like a there, they, there's a formula, a standard formula, which is more guesswork in my opinion, but it was standard formula for a recurring donor ask. Right. And um, that sounds about like about if you donated thirty bucks, three bucks sounds like a recurring donor donor. Oh, ask I see. I, I don't think it was. I think it was just to get me into the thing. And then when I once I got in, I noticed they had actually a different what ask. Was the minimum I, donation amount on the donation form? Do you know? Um, I think it was. Uh, oh, I forget that one. I know. I know that the Bernie, uh, the Jeb Bush one I got mm-hmm. was one dollars. You know, like it's hardly even worth filling out your credit card for one dollar. <laughs> it's a lot of work oh, for one dollar. Yeah. But the, but when you actually went on there, I think it was twenty five was the minimum. Well, something I do um, in some of my appeals is I actually ask. I I do if I do a hard ask in the appeal, which is most of the time. I'll have a hard ask. I'll have a, um, a lower amount, and I'll say, or if you can't afford that right now, please send in a dollar as a symbol of your support. Right. Guess how many dollar donations I get? You probably don't get that Very many. Very few. Yeah. But I yeah. get a lot of five and ten dollar donations. Right. 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 Well, I know one of the the effective techniques that uh, I'm sure you all have used is uh, is kind of like a lottery thing. If you give three bucks, you can get a, a, on the on a thing. Uh, you have a chance to meet, I don't know, Mitt Romney or Bernie Sanders, have lunch with, uh, you know, Ben Carson. Am I right? Is That works pretty well? Yeah. Yeah. Contests are always great. They work for any client. Um, if you can think of something to give away that like your clients are going to find valuable. It's kind of the time. whole uh, lottery uh, buzz, you know, when the lottery gets to, mm-hmm. I don't know, 1.5 yeah. billion, it was everybody was buying them, or, uh, yeah. or most people were buying them anyway. It was, it was, it was exciting. Yeah, so it's great. For, for, the Carson, for the Carson, you've done iPads, you've done dinner with Carson, we've done autograph books. Oh, they yeah. work every time, okay, especially on know. social media, they work as uh-huh. well. Well, I highly recommend it. Yes. Um, now you've written some direct mail. What do you see as the differences uh, between direct mail and email? You know, what would you say the big difference from somebody? Because you're kind of opposite. Most people, there's a lot more people that have gone from direct mail to doing email, just because mm-hmm. it's an older, uh, you know, uh, medium. Then, uh, what have you learned? I would say that the way that I did it is probably better because I'm used to implying a lot. Right. You, know, you have to imply, and you have to leave it to the donor to figure out what you're saying. You kind of use a different right. tact when you're writing and you, you want it to be short and sweet and get them thinking about worst case scenario without having to spell it out for them. Right, direct mail is a little mail, longer, yeah. You can spell it out, you can right. say exactly what you mean, you can give examples. Right, right, and, right. and of course the subject line is hugely important. I know you test a lot of things, right? Absolutely. Um, 
Well, uh, Ben, I want to talk about the uh, the Carson campaign. First off, I think it did a great job. Uh, although he came in fourth in Iowa, he was really first in uh, direct mail and email, and uh, was mm -hmm. the uh, you know the leading candidate for a while. And I've I've read some that criticize. I mean, I think everybody that gets uh, in this business gets criticized one time or another. Um, but if you look at it, I think what email and direct mail provide whether it's been Carson or Bernie Sanders or, or whomever, it gives us somebody who's not well-funded, not personally wealthy or not beholden to these, I don't know, you know, doesn't have Sheldon Adelson's money or some, some, you know, some, uh, some super rich guy backing him, the opportunity to run. I think that's a great thing. I don't know why, uh, I don't know why it's criticized. The super PACs? Well, I mean, no, I think some people criticize the Carson fundraising. Oh, the Carson fundraising. Yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah I yeah. think it's uh, much less objectionable to the super PACs. Uh, also, uh, well, some people are criticizing direct mail or email as being expensive to raise funds, but I'll say this. Um, you're identifying voters. That's half of it is just the data that you're collecting from it. So it's not like... I love that argument that's always made um, by the anti-direct mail people that you're just, you know, you're, I, they always say, you're spending money to ask people for more money. So you can bring it in and you can use the money they donate to ask them for even more money. And it, no, that's not what's happening at all. We're collecting data. That's really the most important uh, part of the online fundraising and the Absolutely. direct mail is the data because you're getting their address, you're getting their email address, you're figuring out um, just the fact that they're an online donor means a whole number of different things, just like the fact that they're a direct mail donor means a whole number well, of things. Well, you're getting people to volunteer. You're getting uh, volunteers out of it. Uh, you're getting... You, get, you said you identified you can, you uh, 30... You that zip code to right. pair that up with a voter file and turn them out to vote. You can do all kinds of things. And you said you had identified 35,000 voters in Iowa. Obviously, Carson didn't get quite that many. He got around half that for a variety of reasons. But, I mean, that tells you something right there that, you know, the, the, the true, uh, you know, waste of money uh, or scam, I, fr I frankly think, was, was what happened with Jeb Bush. The, the consultants there produced ads that don't identify any voters. They didn't get any voters to the, the, the polls. Yeah. You don't know. I mean, you spend uh, tens of millions on advertising. You don't, you don't identify your voters. Yeah. So in a caucus state, there's no question that direct mm -hmm. mail or email would be more effective than, than that kind of TV advertising. Well, I obviously. I mean, we did better than Jeb Bush's strategy. Yeah. I mean, that's... That's pretty clear. I think he spent twenty five thousand dollars per voter. It was it was not together. It, I, you know, I, I heard uh, the uh, pollster Frank Luntz said that it was crap, and he said it really. He was thinking of a different word for of, of uh, Jeb Bush's advertising, and then, and then he said, uh, you know, if he was a, a mega donor, he would ask for a refund. You know, was right. that that bad? Yeah. Um, you know, the reason I bring that was a fundraising success magazine. Now it's called, uh, I think, Nonprofit Pro. Had a had a blog post on this, and, uh, and 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 you may not know this, but all the all the commentary was kind of hostile to the blog because it's really like an attack on direct mail. Mm -hmm. um, for a campaign, there's probably no way better way to identify mass donors. It's much better. I mean, maybe maybe for some charities they'd prefer to have one mega donor, but for a campaign, you want lots of donors. Because you have a lot of people that you can get to the polls. And there's something else you're not thinking about as well. If you have an advocacy group and you're pressuring Congress to do this or that, oh, well, true. You want as many petitions on it as you can get. If you're flooding in, you know, no question about it. With petitions, you definitely want as many as you can get, whether they're small donors, large donors, or whatever. So it justifies spending money to identify them. Now. You know, one of the things I say, or we all say in, in direct mail, is that bad news is usually good news for fundraising. I guess I guess there's some bad news that's just bad news. You know, <laughs> you know, you were uh, the Wounded Warrior Project the other day had a real bad story about them. That was just bad news. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. but uh, I'm thinking of the uh, Carson when he made a comment uh, a few months back about the Constitution, uh, Muslims, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that helped with fundraising. He was criticized by some. Oh yeah, but that that definitely helped with fundraising, right? There's because an outpouring of support after. Anytime that. you are your back is against the wall, uh, people are under attack. Um, 
that and it's got to be you know you have to have the right villain too and for that it was the media because so much of that was the media asking a gotcha question and then distorting a perfectly reasonable answer just him coming in and saying i mean look the constitution says that we don't do religious tests but at the same time the constitution and sharia law are incompatible with one another and you take that it's a point he's trying to get across the media the media distorts it and it turns into this big fiasco so, and you've got your villain which is the well, media and I that think motivates the donors controversy usually helps I think I think Trump's shown that to some degree with uh, <laughs> not always but usually usually it helps I think people are too risk averse uh, mm-hmm. often they are now let's say I send out an email uh, you know at, at, at five o'clock when would I have most of my money in just uh, what would you say I would give it four to six hours yeah, half time right. is four to six hours and that's probably half of it's in okay maybe a little more okay. than half if, well, if it's five o'clock, though, it, it might be a little. If, if you give me an example where you send it out at nine a.m., right. I could say with confidence it'll be like four to six hours, so you'll have half your money in. Five p.m. is kind of an odd time. Five is kind of an odd time. Yeah, because people, it might pick up again big time in the morning. Right from the next day, people aren't looking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it depends. Yeah, so I it's kind of a weird time. I see. So um, now. How how often do you email? It depends on the client. It totally right. depends on the client. And do you always have fundraising, or do you mix your fundraising with some other kind of like video, maybe, or something like that? Do you videos are good. Um, just getting them. I heard videos aren't necessarily the best for raising funds. Is that correct? That is correct. They're um, not. They're but they're good for educational, maybe, maybe for bonding purposes. Well, I mean, the, you just the exception to the them. rule is if if you have a good fundraising ask at the end of the video, or if the video ties into your fundraising ask at the end of the or video. Or maybe if you have Sarah McLaughlin music. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. Or if you have the words up on the screen, stance very style. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Very good. And uh, I know you've done a little bit of, uh, we've mostly been talking about political, I know you've done some animal fundraising. What, what have you learned there that uh, works well? Well, I think a lot of the same strategies you use on the political side can be carried over. Um, like we talked about the contests. Uh, I ran a contest where supporters could chip in, um, make a donation, and be entered into a contest to go see the tigers. It's a tiger sanctuary uh, that I raise funds for. and. Uh, they had the opportunity, of course, with a donation to go visit the Tigers. And that's really compelling because uh, so many people, it's just so interesting to so many people because right. you don't see a Tiger every day. People <laughs> love the contest. They want, yeah, you know what you're giving yeah. people is the opportunity to dream. Yeah. Um, the other day I was saying, you know, well, these lotteries, even though I bought the tickets myself, you know, this, they, they, they prey on the poor. I'm sure you've heard that. Mm-hmm. And a guy I, I was playing uh, poker with, so I shouldn't even, <laughs> he says, yes, but you're letting them dream. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what we're doing in these contests is people thinking, oh, mm-hmm. I can see myself, uh, I don't know, uh, having a beer with the burn. <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah, or, yeah. Or, or Mitt Romney, probably not a, probably a root beer with Mitt Romney, you know. Well, and you're you can't getting... have caffeine either. <laughs> okay, well, whatever. Root beer doesn't have caffeine. <laughs> anyway, something like that, you know, you're letting people dream, and I think that's why contests are so popular. So it's a uh, as as something else. I I've seen something else online auctions uh, which you can do through email, uh, which uh, probably probably yeah. something. I haven't yeah. done one of those myself, but yeah. I can see how that would be effective. Well, very good. Hey, this is uh, the Donor Doctor uh, signing out. I have, hope you learned a lot. Uh, again, if you want to contact me, donordoctorshow at gmail.com. Thank you. Thank you.